Hi, my name is Heather Shaw. I am the reference librarian at Northeast Texas Community College. And what you are about to see is a recording of a face-to-face -face library instruction session inside Julie Ratliff's English 1301 class. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you need me to go over anything that I missed in this particular video, let me know, and I would be more than happy to do so. This is how you would access the databases when you're off campus. My portal, username and password. You won't need that when you're on campus. If you're on campus you're on your device, make sure it's the Eagle Wi-Fi, not the guest Wi-Fi, because the guest Wi-Fi won't let you in. This is the library homepage right here. To get to the library homepage, you can get to it from the campus homepage. From the campus homepage where it says students right here, under students, you can click on library. That's one way. Another way is if you're in the portal, you don't have to log into the portal if you don't want to, but you will need to click on the link over here that says college library. Any of those will get you to the library homepage. Once you're here, you can search the databases for articles, streaming videos, ebooks, things like that. You can also search your catalog for books, DVDs, and other things we have on the shelf. When you say DVD, do you mean like, like, actual, actual physical DVDs? Yes. If you want streaming videos, we do have a streaming video database, which is called Films on Demand right here. Yeah, I can show you guys. Yeah. So on the library homepage, you can search the databases, you can search the catalog for things we physically have on the shelves. And when it comes time to writing your papers, the citation style guide will be very helpful for you guys. For English class, it's MLA. For the sciences, allied health, and some others, it's usually APA. But for English class, it's MLA. So I'm going to take you to databases. And this takes you to the list of databases, the entire list of databases A to Z. Now, if you want just the ones for English class, English class is part of the humanities. So if you click on humanities right here, communications and fine arts, and then click apply, that will get you just the humanities ones. Now, for any other reason, if you're in this allied health or any of the sciences, things like that, you can choose those and click apply it'll narrow it down to those general topics. Since we chose humanities, communications, and fine arts, this should be good for English class or any of the other humanities. There are certain databases that are good for any class, and that is academic search complete, which is this one right here. There's also topic search, which is at the end. Before that though, there's also master file complete, which is right here. And then there's also topic search, which is this right here. You can read any of the blurbs next to these database names to see what they talk about, see what topics they cover. Now on the computers in the library, you won't need a username and password to access the databases off campus where that's where you'll need the Michael portal username and password. And if you're on your personal device, if you're on the guest Wi-Fi, it won't let you in the databases at all. Just make sure you're on the Eagle Wi-Fi if you're on your personal device. All three of these databases, whether it's Topic Search, Academic Search Complete, or Master File Complete, are all made by EBSCOhost. And if you want to search multiple EBSCOhost databases at any given time, you can by clicking on this link right here that says EBSCOhost Databases Complete List. So when you click on the name and you're off campus, that's where it'll ask for the password. On campus, it takes you straight here. Now this is the entire list of databases that EBSCOhost makes that this library subscribes to. As you see, Academic Search Complete is already checked. If you scroll down, you'll find our eBooks are also checked. You can uncheck them if you want. You'll also find that Master File Complete is also checked. And as you see, we do have some databases in Spanish, so keep that in mind. 
And then there's also topic search right here. So within this list of databases, regardless of whatever class you're doing your research papers for or whatever topic you're researching, good chance it's probably in this list. Most of our business databases are in here. Almost all of our allied health databases are in here. I think all of education's in here. We have some political science databases in here. We have some legal databases in here. And there's more. So if you're not sure which ones to pick or you forget which ones to pick, you can click on this button right here that says select all. Selecting all chooses all of them, which is about 50 or so different databases. It's the lion's share of what we have. We have more outside of EBSCOhost, but it gets a lot of them. But it does warn you, it may slow down your searching some if you do this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue, which takes us to the search screen. So we could type up anything right up here. Before I do though, I wanted to point out this down here. Want to make sure that this box is checked where it says full text. The reason being is that if it wasn't checked, you may run across a situation that there's an article you like, but you only have the citation information and abstract and that's it. Citation information is title, author, name of journal, all that other good stuff. And an abstract is a one paragraph summary of what the article is about. If you, you cannot write papers from abstracts. I run into that sometimes when people try to quote an abstract instead of the actual paper. Do not try to write a paper from an abstract. So we'll get after you for sure. <laughs> if you don't have full text of an article, there is a way around it to see if we have it full text elsewhere using Journal Finder and a few other methods, but save yourself some headaches and just make sure that this is checked right at the beginning. Now, peer-reviewed and scholarly journal, I don't know if you need it for this particular assignment. No? Uh, did you want me to explain it? No, they don't need it right now. Okay. Just be aware that some of your teachers may need a peer-reviewed or scholarly source as you progress in your academic career. So right up here, we can type in anything we're looking for. So someone give me their topic. Your narrow topic, not the general one. What was that? We're supposed to narrow that. That what we did on Wednesday was narrow it out. So somebody throw out how they narrowed out their topic. Someone have cheese by chance? You have cheese. Okay, I can type in cheese, or did you want something more specific? Okay, effects of cheese on dreams? Okay, I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> Eight. Okay. Hey, they had it on their vocabulary list not long ago, the difference in effect and effect. Mm-hmm. So first time around, I got eight. This time around, I get one. If you like this one or are curious about this one, you can click on it to read more about it. So you get your citation information, title, author, name of journal, all that other good stuff. You have your major subject terms within the article itself. And then you have your abstract, which is a one paragraph summary of what the article's about. I'd spend a couple of minutes reading the abstract, then going straight to the full text of the article and spending 10 or 20 or so minutes, only to find out at the end maybe it's not something you need or want. If you read the article and you think... <laughs> so if this is something you think you might want, you can scroll over here. Now this one just has HTML, some have just PDF and some have both. So I'll go ahead and click on this. So HTML should have the same content as a PDF, but it's gonna look more like an email, as you see here. Another thing that sometimes happens with uh, HTML is that if there's anything of a visual nature, charts, graphs, pictures, things like that, aha, like this right here. Sometimes this happens, where they didn't provide it in the HTML version, but say like there's a little caption right here, so you know there was something there. 
And in this case, you know, there was a graph, but they didn't provide it. They just described it. If you like this article, you can print it, you can email it, and you can also save it as well. Now, if you're on the computers in the library here, be sure if you save it to not save it on the computer in the library because they wipe these periodically. So if you did anything today, come back tomorrow and it may be gone. So be aware of that. So either save it to a jump drive or email it to yourself. So put in your email address here. For a subject term, you can put in anything you want, but I make it easy on myself. And I just copy and paste the title of the article. But you can put anything in there. For English class, ignore this step. And then hit send. <laughs> All right. You learn how to do it in LA on your own. Don't let somebody else do it for you. Yeah. Because you're still accountable whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. OK. Any questions so far? This doesn't happen often, but the fact that she ended up with only one source. Yeah. You go back to the sure the citation. Okay, if it happened like this where you end up with only one, you could always back up and try one of the other subject terms and see if a more general term would take you to a larger collection. Of mm -hmm. Because I don't know that we've ever had a girl who came up with one. Story. Yeah. It was a very specific topic in the first place. Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah. So, like, if you clicked on dreams and see what comes up. So, clicking on dreams, it'll give us over 9,000 articles that yeah that talk about dreams as a major topic within the article. And then, if you have this many, look on the left-hand side to narrow it down. So, especially look at subject, the source term. Subject major heading and subject. Whichever one of these you happen to pick on, make sure you do the show more. The reason why you want to do the show more because that if I was to click on just dreams right here, it'd give me just that one. Versus if I go show more, I can click as many of these as I want. So I don't know if we want to click on any of these. Well, and the guys, the number over here at the right tells you out of that original 9,000, how many had this as one of its, one of the subheadings. Like we clicked a dreams from a subheading of that other topic. Mm -hmm. So these, some of them may have multiples of those. Some may only have one of those. But when you click on it, it helps give you a rough estimate of how far you're narrowing down your search. Mm -hmm. And then you can keep doing that several times. Yes. If you need to. Yes. So for dreams, there's over 6,000. Children's literature and nightmares and see how that narrows down dreams. Okay. And we can scroll through this list as well. You had your topics ready, like you requested. What about emotion? Emotion? Nightmares and children's dreams. Did you get nightmares and children's dreams? I did. Nightmares and children's literature. Emotions to go with it. Emotions? Okay. Well, let's see what happens. All right. So we were at 9,100 or something? Somewhere in there, yeah. Down to 497. There. A lot better, but still we need to narrow this down some more. A fast way of narrowing things down is that if you needed a peer-reviewed journal in this particular class, this time you don't. But if you forgot to check it before, you could check this here to narrow it down to just the peer-reviewed stuff. Which doesn't hurt, guys. I'm just not requiring that for you guys, but it wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Those are the ones we were talking about where they've had uh, you know, ac officials actually look at it and make sure mm -hmm. that all the information's accurate. Yes. And if you're in any of the sciences, allied health. Really, psychology is going to want refereed journals. Yeah. If you're in any of the sciences, allied health, or even, at least in the past, business classes, they want articles that are five years or newer, especially in the allied health and sciences. Anything that's five years or older tends to be too old. So if you need it within five years or whatever date range you need, you can slide this, or you could also type it in here. So go from 497 down to 70, just, yeah, which is much better. I do consider this a searchable list. So you can scroll through this and see if there's one that you like. Work is a nightmare. That doesn't sound like children's. <laughs> 
But also you can narrow it over here as well where you see. Bad dreams are cool or good. Okay, we can try this. Bad dreams are good. I don't know. I just randomly picked it. <laughs> I'm just demonstrating for you. So yes. Randomly picking things. Was work, work was. Work is a nightmare. Work is a nightmare. Is that interesting? That's the title of an article. <laughs> it's the title of the article. There you go. So if you're curious about this one, you can click on it and read more about it. So you have your citation information, title, author, name of, in this case, it's a magazine. You have the subject terms within the article itself. You have the abstract, which is a one paragraph summary of what the article is about. Read this before going straight to the article. In this case, we do have both options, PDF and HTML. If you have both options, my personal preference is PDF because it's like a photocopy. So it's going to look the exact same way as it did in the original magazine, journal, or newspaper. This is a magazine article here. So if you like this one, you can print it, you can download it, you can also email it to yourself as well. So this one has a few pictures in it. To show you the HTML version, I'm going to go ahead and click on this right here. Get used to reading abstracts before you waste mm -hmm. time going through an entire article. Because, you know, reading one paragraph takes you like a minute. Reading a whole article may take you two hours, and you figure out that's not what you wanted in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if you read the, the abstract, at least it, it might cut down your, your overall time you have to spend researching. Mm -hmm. So this is the HTML version of the article. So it should have the same content, but as you see, it looks more like an email. And the original, yeah, we got this going on right here. Sometimes they provide the pictures, they may be out of order, but sometimes it's right where it needs to be, or sometimes you may get this. It just depends with HTML. Anyway, but if you like this, you can email it, you can save it, and you can also print it as well. Do you all have questions on this? No? Okay. Another thing to keep in mind, yes? If we could do everything we learned today, uh -huh. where would we find you? I'm here pretty much the whole time. The only time I'm not here is early in the mornings on Mondays and Tuesdays because I always close. And we're open later on those days. I get here at 9.30. If I'm not here, Ron Bowden, the library director, he is here. So if you can't find me, you should be able to find him. Wait a Oh, Ron? You went, you went that away. Went oh. Well. oh, there's Ron. She was asking if she forgets everything, can she find me? And so I was telling her if she can't find me, she can also talk to you. Yeah, most definitely. My office is right next to this one here. So. Okay. And the tutors should be able to help the two guys. Yes. There are free writing tutors here in the library. It's not just for English class, it's for any writing assignment. I'm not sure. I'd have to look. We do have tutor hours posted. If you need those tutor hours, find me later and I can get you a copy. Any other questions so far? Okay. All right. So that's kind of the general information on the EBSCOhost databases. I'm going to take you guys to another database. So I'm going to scroll down to Opposing Viewpoints and Context. So if you have a controversial topic, which these may not be exactly controversial. Yes, depending on. Yeah. Depending on random draw. Mm-hmm. So Opposing Viewpoints right here is very good if you have a debate or a controversial topic or an argumentative paper or persuasive paper, things like that. So go ahead and click on Opposing Viewpoints in Context. And this takes you to their default screen. Now I know you guys already have topics picked, but one thing I like is that if you didn't have your topic picked, you can click on this icon right here that says Browse Issues. So you can scroll through this really long list of various topics. And the nice thing is, is that all of these pages, all of these topics are hand-created pages. So that's going to be the best possible information for these topics. 
For instance, if you were wanting to look, I don't know if social media is any of y'all's topics or not, but if you wanted to look at social media or Facebook, for instance, you click on Facebook. And this gives you always a good comprehensive summary of what the topic's about. If you want to read the whole thing, you can by clicking on Read More. You have different viewpoints, pros and cons. These are people's opinions about this particular topic. If you want to read all of the featured viewpoints, you can click on where it says Featured Viewpoints. Uh, there are more viewpoints down here. Uh, here are academic journals. Primary sources, reference sources, pictures, video clips, audio clips, magazine sources, news sources, website statistics. I like this database because it has statistics. And if there's something, say like if you wanted to look at this statistic, for instance, you can click on that. You can take a look at the, the statistic that they have here. And it looks like these are actually, yes, they're interactive. So we've got male respondents, female respondents, so forth. So if you like this, you can email this, you can download it, and you can also print it as well. Let's see. Do we want to go with cheese or do we want to go with a different topic? Yes, we need a different topic. You don't stupid. Are you doing this? Uh-huh. And you just said highlight notes you can do that while you're on this site. Highlighting? Is that I'm sorry, uh what what highlights and notes up in the upper right corner she's asking. Oh. I guess you can. That's something I really haven't looked into. Try the environment and mental health. When you need okay, so environment and mental health? And mental health. Okay, so even though there may not be a hand-created page for environment and mental health, doesn't mean that there's nothing within this database there on that. There's probably an environmental page and a mental health page, probably just not intersecting. Yes. And I know for sure there's an environmental page dealing with global warming and climate change, if you are going that way. So as far as environment and mental health, we have 109 academic journals, eight different viewpoints, different reference sources, video clips, audio clips, newspaper sources, magazine sources, websites. Isn't that the same thing at the very top of the one we need? Yeah, she's just putting where you find them. Yeah, so if you wanted just the viewpoints, you click on viewpoints to read all of the different viewpoints if that's what you wanted. Now remember, a viewpoint is a person's opinion. So when you're doing affirmative papers, if you get a viewpoint that's positive, you should look for a viewpoint that's negative also to make sure you're seeing both sides of the equation. Because you, you have a job to be objective in this one. Yes. Do you all have any other questions at the moment? Okay. All right. I'll show films on demand. They like movies. Sure. And so, yes, I don't have any trouble with using uh, using a documentary. I have trouble with using a popular movie as a topic, but you know, not the documentaries. Okay. So, films on demand is our streaming video database, which you can watch for free if you go through the library. Now, you can go ahead and click on films on demand from the list of databases. Think of it as Netflix for educational videos, okay? So if you like to watch History Channel, PBS, and other things like that, we've got a lot in here for you. Now this is their default page. Right up here we could type in whatever we're looking for. Mondays at Racine.
this one. Now it says this is HBO. Now we do have HBO, however, it's HBO documentaries. You're not gonna get True Blood or Game of Thrones or any of those other really popular shows. But you will get all of their documentaries, which Okay. What happens to our brains when we get scared? Okay. Which, by the way, I'm a clown on the side. I don't do scary clowns. Clowns get a bad man. Yes, they do. Oh, this is the full video, which is just shy of six minutes long. If you wanted to watch segments of the video, oh, this one doesn't have any segments. Uh, yes. If it had segments, you could click on this right here, and you can watch specific segments. So this describes a little bit about the video here. Another thing I mentioned, if you like to watch PBS or History Channel or things like that, if you go to Feature Producers right here and go to View All, you can look at the different shows or different channels that we have within this database. So Frontline, which is a great video news magazine done by PBS, there's the History Channel, there's HBO. Like I said, it's the HBO documentaries, not their popular movies or shows. Modern Marvels, which is on the History Channel, National Geographic, there's PBS. TED Talks, the most random useful information out there. Case in point, there is an actual TED Talk on how to use a paper towel. Whether or not it's in here or YouTube or Netflix, because you can find TED Talks there too, I, I'd have to look it up. But yeah, TED Talks are always short, no more than 15, 20 minutes long. Some are even just like a minute or two at most for some of them. Anyway and the topics range really wide. So there's that, and you can go in here, Nova, great science show on PBS. So yeah, if you don't have any TV at all, you wanna watch something, you can go in here for free and watch to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have any questions? Okay. So I was going to go into opposing viewpoints and context. Well, after that, I was going to do actually the science in context because say like the cheese one, the mental health, and even the environment, all of those have some science components in them, possibly. So under the list of all of our databases, scroll down till you get to the S's from the list of the databases that we have. Here we go, here's science and context right here. So if you click on science and context, one of the differences between science and context and opposing viewpoints is that opposing viewpoints has opinion pieces, science and context will not. I don't know if they're gonna have much about environment and mental health in one. It looks just like the other one. Yes, it'll look very much like opposing viewpoints and context but it's gonna have more of the technical jargon in it. Opposing Viewpoints doesn't have quite so much in that. Oh, here we go, okay. I'm getting it. Why don't y'all go ahead and try Science in Context and see if y'all can get in. You guys, remember when I told you there's a, there was, there's a way to find a statistic to do anything? This is one of the ways you do it. Yes. So if you hadn't picked your topic yet, you could also browse topics here. There will be some overlap as far as topics go between opposing viewpoints and science and context, <coughs> but not everything overlaps. So if we were to do environment, and mental health, so that's what we used on the last one. So we actually do get something. 210 different academic journals, reference sources, pictures, audio clips, news sources, magazine sources. 
So there's that. We can also put in something else up here. Someone give me their topic. What's your topic? Uh, internet addiction. Internet addiction. Okay, that might be in here. <laughs> Maybe narrowed that one very much because I think that's what's on the actual list. <laughs> okay, so doing internet addiction on science and context, we've got 73 different academic journals, two reference sources, one picture, video clip, 17 magazine sources, different newspaper sources, Gaming audio. disorder? I an think actual term called gaming I disorder? I think so now. There's yeah. another term to look up gaming disorder. By the way, guys, when you're doing when you're doing research, that's one of the things you can do. Is Ms. Shaw and I ran into this problem one time. Computers can only bring up what they've been programmed to bring up. So you may look at something and say, "Well, teenage, you know, teen teen pregnancy was teen pregnancy." Was mm -hmm. it? We were looking up teen yeah. pregnancy, and we got like five articles, and we're like, "There have to be like thousands of yeah, these things." We did teen teenager. Yeah, and we had to we had to play with the term because the computer doesn't recognize that teens and teenager and adolescent are all basically the same term. Young adult. Young yeah. adult. Yeah. So what? Sometimes you have to play with the terms that you put <laughs> in because the computer's looking for something very specific to reference. Mm -hmm. And so when you're throwing out stuff, pay attention to what they reference and how they reference it. So sometimes it's a different way of writing the same thing, and you can search under a new term to get what you're looking for and get more information out of it. Yeah. But and, I, I will yeah. never forget that we couldn't get teen pregnancy. Yeah, to yeah. <laughs> that was some years ago. Uh, one of our students, uh, yeah, was researching teen pregnancy or teenage pregnancy, and we tried like half a dozen different terms. And finally, I forget which one was the bingo, but, yeah, but it, and it just depends on which database you're searching. And one one term is going to work for one database, and a different term might work for a different database, and we'll get more as a way to get better information. And since you're doing internet addiction, there is a book called the DSM-5 that deals with mental health. They should talk about various addictions in there. So, a like gaming disorder might be something to look at. Yeah. Up. So there's that right there. There you go. <laughs> Do you have any questions on science and context? No. Okay. Did y'all want to use any books? or other items on our they shelves. They are welcome to use other to use books if they like. Do you want to go ahead and show Okay. Do you want to go ahead and show them how to search the catalog for one? Do you want me to show them how to search for one? Okay. I'm willing to bet most of them don't know how to do the Dewey Decimal System. Well, yeah, we use Library, Library of Congress. Congress. Yes, we use Library of Congress. But they probably don't know that one either. The red and blue bookmarks talk about the Library of Congress, which is how our books are classified on the shelves. As you see, they are grouped by major topics. The white bookmarks talk about the library, our hours, what, how many books you can check out, things like that. Anyway, if you want to search for a book or something else that's physically on our shelves, you can click on right here where it says library catalog. You know, I mentioned the DSM, for instance. If I was to do DSM-5, for instance, which is a very well-known book in psychology. Now, this search is not just us, but all the libraries in the world, pretty much. So if you want just us, you can click on right here where it says has our name. And then if you want book, Click on book right here instead of any other format. And if you want a print book instead of an ebook, because it also searches our ebook collection as well. If you want a print book, you can click on print book, so it'll be a physical book on our shelf. And then you can scroll through this list and see if there's one that you like. And the top one was the actual book. Yes. <laughs> this book right here is the actual DSM, that's the full name of the book. If you want to read more about it, you can click on the title to see more information on it. Click on into psychology, get used to looking for that book. Yes. View description to read more about what's in the book. 
And I know it doesn't say it anywhere, but if you want the call number, you have to click on our name to go to what I call our quote unquote old catalog call number, which is how you'll find it on the shelf. It's the number on the spine of the book. If you need help finding it on the shelf, just find me and I can try to help you find it. The reason why you see it in our quote unquote old catalog versus in here, when the library paid for this, we didn't pay for the entire package. So one of the caveats is that we don't have the call numbers here, but this link will take you to our old one, which does have the call number and also lets you know where it's at and if you can check it out. Reference book, what that means, it's in the reference section. You can look at it in the library, you just can't check it out. If it's, it's expensive and they don't want to destroy it. Well, that could be one of the reasons. There could be others. Things that have been referenced. They're very expensive books and they don't want them disappearing. So if it says reference book, you can look at it in the library, you just can't check it out. Now, if it says main reading room, basically that means it's here in the library. You can check it out. Our system doesn't recognize that we're only one branch in only one room. That's basically what it means. And if it's checked out, it'll say checked out. So, do you have any questions on how to use this? Can you show me again? Sure. Okay. You can check out two books at a time, guys. On the same topic. Subject. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you, and you get them for what, three weeks? Three weeks, you can renew for an additional three weeks if you need to. You can do a total of four books. So if you were in history class, for instance, you can do two on Abraham Lincoln, two on the Civil War, but not all four on Abraham Lincoln. So similar in this class. So they don't charge you for late books. They don't have an individual day per day charge. But if you do not return the books on time, they put a hold on your transcript. Mm -hmm. Cannot register for another semester. Cannot graduate. Cannot graduate. We can't send your transcript anywhere to get a You job. can't see your grades. So in a lot of ways, that's a lot more serious than just charging you a few cents a day. So get them back in on time. Because then they start tracking me down to track. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Okay. Yeah. So after two weeks, well, get after, <laughs> yeah, one week past due, you'll get a letter reminding you that you're late. At two weeks, you'll get a letter saying your record is on hold. So return the book, and then we'll process it to where you can actually register for a new semester and things like that. So you wanted me to show you again. What topic do you have? Just give her your topic. She has terrorism. Terrorism, okay. Just doing terrorism as a keyword, you see we get a lot of hits worldwide. So let's just narrow it to us. And then let's narrow it to book. And since it does ebooks as well as print books, let's do print book. This right here is actually, you know, I showed you guys the database of posing viewpoints and contacts. Mm -hmm. See if I can show you the picture a little better. I'm not sure if you can. That does say opposing viewpoints and contacts. They do have some print items. This is one of them. It's just that the database is going to be more up to date than probably a lot of the books are from them. They're both very good. The books, they're very balanced on the arguments, pros and cons. So anyway, this is one possible book. If you like this one, you'd have to scroll down to our name right here. This is the call number right here. And this one, yes, you can check it out if you're interested in it. Now, if you have a specific topic, say, like, or if you're looking for a person specifically, I don't know if anyone has Stan Lee this time around or not. Somebody is coming. Does someone have comic books? You've got comic books. Okay. So some people, they choose Stan Lee. Some people go different ways on that. If you wanted a book about Stan Lee, for instance, so we would do Lee, comma, Stan. And we would look for books that are about him. Now, since he is an author, if you wanted books that he has written, we could change it to author. But we're going to look for books that are about him. And I'm going to hit enter. So let's limit it to us. 
And we recently added some more books about him too. And then book. So here are two books about Stan Lee, if you were interested in these. So you click on our name if you want this one, and that's the call number there. We have other comic books and graphic novels in our collection as well, depending on where you want to go with this. So anyway, including some manga, if you want to go that way. So any questions? Okay. Oh, you want me to show them where the citation style guide is? No. Okay. <laughs> They're going to learn their own citation guide on Wednesday. Thank you for watching this library instruction video. My name is Heather Shaw, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you would like me to go over anything that I had not gone over in the video, feel free to contact me at 903-434-8152. You can also email me at hshaw at ntcc.edu. And I am now also on Microsoft Teams. So if you want to chat with me there, you can. Thank you very much and you have a nice day.